Hi, I'm Gary Bembridge and I'm on board the MS Serenade 1. It's a river cruise ship and I'm going to tell you 10 things that you need to know about cruising on the MS Serenade up and down the rivers of Europe. By the way, stick around for number 10. It is the most asked for thing I ever get asked about river cruises and that's going to be my point number 10. So let's go. The first thing you should know about MS Serenade 1 is that it's been designed as an experience very much for UK travellers, so people from the United Kingdom. So the whole onboard experience, the passengers, the cruise managers, the cruise directors, the food, everything has been really targeted at the UK consumers. So the second thing you should know is that this ship is on an exclusive charter by Titan Travel in the UK. So the ship is owned by a company called Select and they've chartered out the ship to Titan. Now Titan is a escorted tour operator. They are the biggest escorted tour operator in the United Kingdom. So what Titan have done is obviously the ship itself, the, both the technical side hotel operations are run by Select. However, the people that interact with the travelers on a day-to-day -day basis, so the cruise director and the cruise managers are all from Titan and all the tour operators are contracted by Titan. So when you go on tours, they're all uh, people that Titan have worked with. So the third thing you need to know is that bit about the ship. It has 68 cabins uh, with two suites. It holds uh, just over 130 passengers. It has 42 crew. In terms of facilities starting at the top you have a sun deck which also has a uh, glass enclosed lounge with 360 degree views which is very nice. Then on the uh, first level you have things like the panorama lounge which is during the day obviously where people go and relax. In the evening it's the focus point for drinks etc and also where if there's any entertainment there will be entertainment entertainment and nightly talks. Uh, there's also uh, the receptions on that level and also you have some of the cabins. The level below that uh, which is called um, the Mozart level is where you've got uh, some more cabins and also you have the restaurant which uh, is where all the meals, breakfast, lunch and dinner are held. Then on the lower level which is called the Beethoven level there are a few additional cabins. So there is also in terms of other facilities there's a very small fitness room with a sauna in it. There's a little sort of uh, shop area which just sells a branded merchandise for Titan and for Serenade but like most river cruise ships there is no medical facilities at all uh, at all so if you ever have a medical uh, issue they will contract or connect you with people on the land side. So the fourth thing you need to know is about the cabins. So there are 68 cabins and two suites spread across the ship and there are roughly three grades. So the grade that I'm in, which is the sort of Chopin level uh, superior cabin, you then have the Mozart superior cabin. Uh, both of those have Juliet balconies. Then down on the low level, on the Beethoven level, they don't have, uh, you know, uh, Juliet balconies. They just have those small windows that are just above the water level. The great thing about the bathrooms is the bathrooms have a separate shower and a bath in them and that is fantastic. So the fifth thing you need to know is what is a sort of rating of the ship and the service. So the ship is a four star so it's not as luxurious as the five star or six star ships. So some of the things that you should note perhaps that make it more of a four star service is things like you're not going to get bathrobes and slippers. You don't get fruit baskets in the room or flowers in the room. Those little sort of touches. The bedding quality is not sort of the highest bedding quality Quality. It's great. It's perfectly fine quality. You know the towels aren't the big fluffy kind of towels. The sort of things you would normally expect with a four-star service. It's a slightly more uh, better value proposition than some of those five and six-star service ships and all the things that come with that. So the sixth thing that you need to know about the MS Serenade is around the fares. Now like most river cruise ships on the European waterways, it's largely all-inclusive fares. But like any ship or any line you need to check out what does all-inclusive actually mean. So let me run you through what is actually included in the fare. So the first thing which is a big plus is you get a door-to-door -door service. So you will get picked up by a driver taken to the airport whichever airport you're at. You'll get picked up and taken when you arrive to the ship and once you get back home you're taken uh, back. Obviously your accommodation is included, three meals a day are included plus afternoon tea and a midnight snack. In terms of drinks, drinks are included at lunchtime and at dinner where there's a choice of beers, wines, a white wine and a red wine and soft drinks are included. Wi-Fi is also included. The thing I would say about Wi-Fi on the ship 
it's not across the whole ship it tends to be in the panorama lounge and reception area only so uh, once you head into your room you don't get wi-fi what's not included is some of the excursions so you'll find roughly per a seven day trip there's about three included ex excursions unlike some uh, river cruise lines excursions are not included every single day they do sell optional excursions which can be pre-booked before you come on the trip or bought once you're on board and they range in price from about 20 euros for a simple walking tour of course all the way up depending on whether there's entry fees or buses or whatever gratuities are also not included and what happens is you get uh, left an envelope at the end of the cruise to uh, you know leave gratuities of course it's voluntary uh, it's not added on to your bill at all but it's recommended that you should leave you know five or six or seven euros per day per person for the overall hotel staff and another couple of euros as well for for the hotel managers and of course when you're out on tours it's often encouraged to leave a couple of you know one or two euros tips so point number seven is all around where does the ship go to so it sells pretty extensive itineraries and it mostly focuses on the Rhine it focuses on the Danube it also sails um, on the main and the Dutch waterways and it runs programs ranging from seven days up to about 14 or 15 days what's important is it runs in the season so the season starts around March time it runs to about October it then stops for a while but then it also runs uh, the very popular Christmas markets as well in the sort of uh, end of November into December period so my ninth tip is around packing what do you need to bring now the dress code overall is pretty smart casual so in the evenings you don't really have to dress up it is encouraged on the captain's uh, you know welcome or farewell party if you want to you can get dressed up so men are encouraged to perhaps wear a jacket or a tie if they want ladies cocktail dresses what you need to do of course is make sure that you understand the weather and have layers because obviously in Europe at various times of the year you might need layers there is an umbrella in all of the uh, you know the cabins so you do have protection from rain uh, if you need it and of course you could bring a raincoat as well in terms of health if you're a European citizen or a UK citizen it's a good idea to bring your um, health card which gives you free access to healthcare uh, right across Europe that's a good thing to do in terms of adapters the although it's caters to the UK the plugs are European style so you need to make sure that you bring a European adapter for all your electronics so what is my last point and the thing I get asked more than anything else well it's around the passenger mix so what sort of people are going to be on the ship well very simple river cruising largely speaking tends to be a slightly older audience so you're likely to find people in their 50s 60s 70s and beyond that's just the nature of river cruising however what's important is I find on river cruising the type of people that come are people that like to have every decision made for them and it's very simple you know the great thing with this particular cruise is you get picked up from home and every step of your journey is organized for you and so you don't have to plan you don't have to book you don't have to worry so a lot of people who like that way of traveling uh, tend to come on river cruises the other thing I would say is you need to be fairly active because you're traveling into uh, little villages and they don't necessarily have uh, smooth you know nice paved roads there'll be cobblestones so you need to you know make sure that you're pretty active and and enjoy walking now specifically on the MS Serenade because it's a tight and exclusive and it's targeted very heavily the UK bear in mind it's going to be in English it's only going to be in English and it's going to be very much UK consumers so bear in mind if, if you don't like UK travelers or do not want to travel with UK travelers or want to hear other European languages on board then this is probably not the right one for you so there you have it that's my 10 things that you need to know about the MS Serenade river cruising in Europe I hope you found that helpful so what I'd really love you to do is of course leave a comment let me know what you think and if you've been on the cruise uh, if you agree with all those points for people uh, who might be looking at this trying to make up a decision please also like the video that's really really important and even more important than that please subscribe to the tips for travelers youtube channel